Okay, it's day 63 of our one all day workout. Bobby Smurd will be home tomorrow morning. Uh, matter of fact, in a few hours. Um, yeah, because this video I'm, I'm doing is it's late already, so probably won't be up till the a.m. Um, the question is as we get started with our workout. <clears throat> Sleeping all day. Uh, I'm on my liquid diet, but it's still not. I don't know. I think my body is storing the fat. You know, you stop eating, and your body try to save you from starvation, and it be storing the fat. Usually, I use, I lose one pound. Of, a day. Uh, either my scale is broken or my body is not trying to let go of the fat. And let's see how long it's going to take before it start releasing the fat. Got an inchy eye right here. His eye is kind of like swollen. Yeah, so let's see. Am I close enough? I'm gonna get up close and personal today. Okay, so Bobby's more to be home in the morning, tomorrow sometime. Takashi 69. You know, he came home early because he, you know, snitched, ratted, whatever they say. Made the best deal for himself is what I say. <laughs> but he's still talking hard. I seen a video clip where he was in the club. He's still arguing with other gangsters. Um, I mean, come on now. Is that the smart route to take? I mean, for him, because he's working with the government, I guess it's fine for him, but for everybody else, say like Bobby Smurda, is he coming home to drill music, you know? Is he coming home to that drill music is the question. Or do he got something new for us that, you know, Maybe they could dance to in the club. Maybe he could do a duet with another female. Maybe he could do a political rap. Or maybe he could just like do like a harmonizing, you know, melody rap. You know, talking positive, you know. that That's gonna be the person who's able to show that they skills, where they can make a hit song that's good for the clubs, but it's, it's not gangster, you know what I'm saying? It's not talking street, it's not talking killing, it's not talking thug, it's not, talk, it's not drill, you know what I'm saying? That's gonna be the artist that would be a real, to me, a breakthrough. Because, I mean, let's look at it. If you did a bit in jail, right? You did a bit in jail behind the music and what you was carrying on in the street, you know, as far as, you know, being in the gang, getting locked up with your whole gang, you know, information in your songs, 
telling about crimes that's done in the street and you know the judges and all of them allow it in court and put it all together and it, and it seals your deal you know what i'm saying as far as them sentencing you you being convicted you know so i mean so if that was you say if it was me you know what i'm saying if it was me and i went to jail for being gangster talking all my crimes and my lyrics and i did my bed and i came home um if i'm still talking gangster then that means i i like jail i want to go back you know what i'm saying I liked it there. That's my home. I'm coming out to visit y'all for a little while. I'm going to talk some more gangster shit and then I'm going to get locked back up and for my lyrics and, and, and go back in. You understand what I'm saying? So, we need, a, we need one of the artists to set the stage. Um, where you could change the hip hip hop scene, you know, to a more positive scene because, you know, it's very dangerous. It's spilled all into our communities, you know. You know, it's not safe for the elderly, the women, the kids, you know. And then guys is uh, killing each other worse than slavery. So you, you don't even need a master. You don't even need a plantation <laughs> no more. <sighs> Every time you turn around, somebody's, some shooting is going on, somebody getting killed, somebody getting shot, or somebody going to jail. You know? A lot of, you know, it's getting ridiculous, like, if it was just a few, then it would be like, okay, so, you know, a few bad guys entered the industry and, you know, this is what happened, but it's almost like, in order to be in hip hop, you have to be in a gang, you have to be gangster, you know what I'm saying? And then that's leading you down. Say like with the record company. Say a record company sign you. And you doing drill music. Or you talking gangster. Or you're a gangster. You talking street. They can't really expect. Say like they sign you a five year deal. Or even a two year deal. They can't really expect. That you are gonna be around that long. You know? So, you know, I mean, how, how much of a relationship would you have with your company? You know, how much would they depend on you being around? You know what I'm saying? If you're a gangster, if you're doing gangster rap or drill music, you understand what I'm saying? Like if I sign a contract, a record contract, which I would never would, you know, but if I did, the record company, I would want to be like my family. I want, I would want to have a a good relationship with them business and you know you know them caring you understand what i'm saying about my well-being you know what i'm saying and about my safety and stuff you know because that's like the most important thing i mean business is business and personal is personal but when it comes down to going on tour, going to different cities, going to different clubs, you know, you need to have security 
the Iraqi company need to make sure that, you know, uh, you're doing the right things, you got the right um, security, the people around you, and everything, you know. They need to care. But now the way things is, they don't really have to care because, you know, guys is moving reckless. Yeah, they're moving so reckless, you know, they can't even send anybody out, you know, that's important to the company with you to the club, you know. I don't even know if the managers still come out, but I guess if you if you got a manager, your manager is gonna be somebody, you know, that you know that is down with your crew or your gang or don't mind the affiliation. Cause why would I send somebody important to my from from my record label to assist you around in your shows if I know that you in a gang and got all this gang stuff going on, you know, where it's, you know, jeopardizing people's safety. I mean, wasn't there a time where regular executives used to be in the club? <laughs> or they still be in the club? I, I don't know, because I don't be in the club. I know when um, I was doing talent shows and stuff, they used to send people out from the record company. You used to have record executives in the club searching for the talent and stuff. I know they do different uh, things different these days, but you know, you have to really separate the office and the business away from the artists, you know, the way the artist is moving today. And they move so dangerous, you know, you just got to hope they make it back safe, you know. But after you do a bit in jail, like, and you still have your fame, you know, you still have your fans waiting for you to come out and drop music and stuff. Are you still dropping the same type of music? I guess, uh, you know, Takashi 69 he could because, <clears throat> yeah, well, I guess we was waiting for him, too, to see if he was going to lighten up on the gangster lyrics, but it seemed like he's still challenging, you know. You know, the tough guys of the industry. <clears throat> but I mean, is that, the, is that the route to go? Is that a good route to go? For anybody else that's not working with the government. That, you know, you didn't snitch on nobody, you did your straight bed, you know. You made it out of that hell hole safely, <laughs> alive. Wouldn't you want to change your style? You know, because all of that, them songs, you know, it'd be the urban communities that be playing those songs and getting into those guys' heads, you know. You know, and they using the, the same slang, you know. 
you know, and the artist is setting the mind the mindset of the community, even though they don't live here no more. You know what I'm saying? You're not gonna find Bobby Smurda, Meek Mills, Takashi Six Nine in your hood, resting their head, waking up every morning, coming out, going to the store. You're not gonna find it, you're not gonna see that. But those are the people that you're listening to. Those are the people's songs that you're listening to, you know, that's dictating how you gonna, you know, your mentality in the hood, you know. Shoot, they just blew up what? What's the guy named Honeycomb Brazy, his grandmother's, his grandmother and grandfather? I was about to say grandmother, but, you know, it's very rare in the black community to see, you know, the man with the wife. It usually be, you know, the black woman be single by herself, the black mother or grandmother. Yeah, but he had his grandparents, both of them, and his street beef led to, I guess, some shooting, them shooting into the house. And I guess, according to him, they had tanks or whatever, oxygen, oxygen tanks that blew up the house. I thought the guys blew up the house, but it was the fact that, um, I don't know, somehow when they did the shooting, the, the tanks blew up and caused the house to go on fire. But that's crazy. All of this bad news is crazy. All of this stuff going on is crazy. Craziness. So, we'll see. We'll see what kind of music we be looking forward to from Bobby Smyrna. It seemed like he could do some dance music though. Cause he was actually, he actually made up a dance. <laughs> he actually made up a dance. <clears throat> Mm, but we need somebody that is a celebrity already, that has a name already, to try to make that move. Because somebody just coming up in the game might not be able to garner that, you know, audience or that attention. You know? But we need a change. Oh, we definitely need a change in hip hop. Or like somebody said, they might ban the music. <clears throat> you know? I mean, how could you want to come up to be a rapper and you got to go to different cities, to different clubs, you know? Every time you book for a show, you don't know what's gonna happen, what's gonna be the outcome. That's not no way to work. You know, you gotta go into a city and into a club and, you know, people are drinking and on pills and high, and smoking weed and probably angel dust. In a crazy mentality, And you gotta walk through all of that. And you coming through dressed up with jewelry on, <laughs> you know, to represent like you the celebrity. And you gotta come through with your watches, your rings and your jewelry. <sighs> through every gangster city, you know? <sighs> Not only that, but you have to check in. <sighs> it's 
so you gotta check into the local gangsters probably throw them some dollars or give them a job as security <laughs> because if you don't then you might have problems coming to people's city and not checking in It's just a mess, you know? <sighs> like I said, I like to do a contest, <sighs> but I wanna do it with people that uh, sign up to membership and join, hit the join button. If I could get some positive rap, some political rap that's actually a good song with a good beat. I still sound good. Uh, ooh, I'm busting the sweat today. I gotta get my paper towel. Oof. I like to do a, a, a contest. Mm. You know, I don't get that. I don't get, you know, that many hits. I don't have that many subscribers. But at least it'll be a start. At least we can start somewhere. <clears throat> yeah, we have political rappers. We have Public Enemy. We had uh, Queen Latifah. Um... I mean, that used to wrap a positive message, basically, is what I'm trying to say. And put a, you know, you know, script uh, verses together, and inside of the verses be a positive message. Or the hook be a positive, you know, hook. Because <clears throat> other than that, I don't see why anybody would want to be, become a rapper today. Everybody going to step up and show how gangster they is and see if they can make it through, <laughs> see if they can survive it. That's like a drug dealer selling drugs, you know, decide they're going to sell drugs and, you know, they know it's a chance they could go to jail or you know, or get robbed or, or killed or something, you know. That's the same way the hip-hop industry is right now. You could come in and you could be doing all that drill music because it's popular right now, but somebody gonna be looking at you like, like you food, <laughs> you know, like they could, they think they could take you or they think they stronger than you and start beefing with you. And then you gotta probably meet up with them at a club or something or on the streets. Yeah, we gotta start making it easier on ourselves. I don't know why minorities always make it hard on themselves. You know? 
even in a in a you know in a hood in a community, you know, like I always say, when you go to the Jewish community, they all be wearing the same thing. Only community that you come to where everybody want to be showing off with expensive gear is the black community, and we already know we the poorest people. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So everybody already know that you're the poorest people. You ain't getting your reparations. Not saying that there's not uh, successful minorities. There's successful minorities and working and getting paid minorities, but you know, it just to take your money to show off. <sighs> You know, looking ghetto fabulous. <sighs> you know, you make the industry, you make the the the, the um, fashion industry by buying and wearing their clothes, and then what happens? They come out with some blackface, or something, or you know, you find out that the owner. <laughs> is racist, you know, or they do some silly uh, stuff to show that, you know, you know, we've been purchasing and spending big money with them all this time and now to come to find out that they racist. But you made the multi-billionaires <laughs> You know, and how many uses do you get out to out of your outfits? How many uses do you get out your sneakers before somebody look at you like, oh, you still wearing them same old sneakers? Oh, you still wearing them same old jeans? You know, I seen jeans that's like eight hundred dollars. You know, a thousand dollar jeans, like you know for you to wear them shits and people to compliment you and they feel like, hey, you know, you shouldn't wear them no more, you know? <clears throat> you know? And then the richest guys, what's his name, Warren Buffett? The Bill Gates, when you see them, they look regular. They just have on like a suit. They suits don't even be looking like high expensive suits, you know? They don't be looking like John Gotti suits or nothing. If they be having on a regular a collar shirt with a blazer, <laughs> with a suit blazer, you know? They don't even be trying hard to show that, you know, they part of the 1%. What's that other guy named from Amazon? Basil, yeah, when you see um, Basil, what's his name, Jeff Basil, he just be having on a pair of jeans, a collar button-up shirt, and he may have on a pair of boots or shoes or something, or sneakers. They don't be trying hard. <laughs> they don't even do the jewelry thing. You know, they might have on a watch, you know, but basically their money is going into investing and buying businesses to up their net worth, you know? Everything that they're doing is to pile up their net worth. But you can't show no net worth with a pair of new sneakers or a pair of thousand dollar jeans. <laughs> Y'all buying stuff that, that's not gonna count, you know? <sighs> oh, I got uh, $10,000 worth, worth of sneakers, you know? <laughs> nah. <sighs> you know, I got $50,000 worth of Ghetto fabulous clothes. Nah, we can't count that. That's not collateral. We can't accept that. 
They can't even take that back if you want a loan, you know. Okay, I got a business idea. I want to get a loan. Okay, they say, well, what kind of income do you have? What kind of, to pay the loan back? What kind of collateral do you have? Do you have a house? You know, do you have a vehicle, a boat, you know? They're not taking no sneakers and shoes and jeans <coughs> and t-shirts. Shit. Yeah, I made me have to go out and get me some jewelry. I went and got me a couple of uh, pieces of jewelry, and I don't even put it around my neck. <laughs> we fighting with the lock on the back and struggling to get it on. How you take this lock off again? <laughs> I don't even put it on. <clears throat> So yeah, I'm working on this midsection, working on the abs. <clears throat> it's taking me forever though. But we'll we'll keep working. <clears throat> we'll keep working. I'm trying to get that that bulge. Trying to make that go down. <clears throat> I've been on a liquid diet since the 14th, so that's about a week already. And like I said, our body must be trying to store the fat. Because if you stop eating, then your body thinks that you're starving and it starts storing the fat. <clears throat> I've seen some artists, they just kind of like backed off a little bit, you know. They still around, but they don't drop music that much, you know. Because if they drop music, they're going to have to probably try to do some drill music or something. I mean, if you really had problems in the street, I mean, do you really want to say it on record, you know? <laughs> do you really want to make threats on record so they could decipher all your songs or your lyrics and lock you up for it? Uh, you know, niggas be doing crimes and <clears throat> doing shit to their ops and they just gotta put it in the song. <laughs> they just gotta let everybody know that, you know, that they struck, you know, that they did something. You know, times has changed. When I was growing up, it was more like, with the streets, it was more like, everybody said they wanted to get in and get out, you know of drug game. They wanted to, you know, sell enough drugs to start their business or open up their store and then then they was gonna leave it alone. <clears throat> Whereas a lot of people, you know, they couldn't uphold that, you know what I'm saying, just like stop the illegal money altogether and it's it's coming in and it's feeling good. You know what I'm saying? But that was basically the goal. The basic goal was to try to get in and try to get out because, you know, if you get busted before you get the money that you need, you're going to end up in jail. Or, you know, 
somebody might kill you trying to stick you up for your drugs, you know? Or you might try to go to make the deal and instead of you making a purchase, they rob you for your money. And you can't let that slide because your reputation in the street will be messed up, you know? So you gotta try to get, get back. And then at the end of the day, the person that have a regular job ends up doing better than you in life because, yeah, you was making thousands every day in the street, but then, you know, you do a 10, 20 year bid. And so now you locked up, not making no money away from your kids. And that person that's working a regular job have, you know, done better than you in life because the whole time you was locked up, he's working legally, you know? Not having to watch his back or none of that. Not having to worry about getting locked up. Not having to worry about stick up kids, you know? So. And then you, you do all of that uh, hustling to impress people that don't give a shit about you if you ain't got no money. Phony people. The people that be around you when you got money, um, you know, if you lose your money or when you end up in a situation, they disappear, the majority of the people. And you just end up with whoever care about you and your family, you know. If you still got your mothers around or your sisters, your aunts or your uncles or something like that, you know, your siblings or something, but the crowd of people that you're trying to impress the streets to say, yeah, this is my time, I, you know, this is the time I had money, this is the time I was, you know, driving a nice car, this is the time, you know, the streets knew I was out here, you know what I'm saying? Like, really? <clears throat> <clears throat> Those people see that, you know, your activities is going to come to an end. They just don't know when, you know. But when they start getting hot, the people start disappearing. If you end up with beef, or you end up with war with another community, with another guy in the street. You see people don't want to back you up with that. They'll start disappearing on that, you know? <clears throat> you get locked up. Or you think, you know, your friends is going to take care of your kids. <clears throat> And it just be your baby mama struggling by herself, coming to see you on the visits. Uh, you know, sometimes you have friends that'll see your kids and give them a dollar or five dollars or ten dollars or buy them something, but you know. That's not child support. It's once in the blue, throwing your kid five dollars. That's that's not that's not gonna carry, you know. That's not gonna carry your kid. <clears throat> oh. Hmm. would think some of the you would think some of the moguls, the black moguls, and I know a lot of these executive record executives is white, but the black moguls like Diddy, Baby, 
Jay-Z, you know, those people would say something, would, would steer the industry. Like, okay, we're not signing nobody that's doing drill music no more. <laughs> Either you come with, uh, you know, political or positive rap, or we're not signing that no more, you know? Because the popular music is the one that they promote the, the most. The only reason why we keep listening to it is because that's what the industry is pushing to the forefront. It's not because people is choosing. You know, they're not giving us a choice like, okay, here's drill music, here's a, here's a political rap, here's a positive rap, <laughs> here's a, a duet, you know. They're not giving you a choice. <laughs> They just pushing all that gangster stuff. The drill music is spreading. But if those moguls come out and say, you know, we're not financing that no more. <clears throat> oh, you, you can't get signed if you're doing gangster music or drill music. So you will have to be completely independent. And a lot of them independent artists that say they're independent is not 100% independent. They got these record companies giving them money for distribution and all of that stuff for one thing or the other thing, you know? So it's a sad situation because, you know, we got, we got people that's, you know, billionaires like Dr. Dre and multi-millionaires, close to billionaires like uh, Kanye West and Master P and all of them, and they just not saying anything. They're not saying a word. Like, come on, y'all, let's change this up a little bit, you know? Yeah, because everybody want to say they came from the streets and they was out there hustling and stuff like that. So they want to talk about what what they did in the streets. Uh, so what the industry needs to start doing is demanding like at least a associate's degree or bachelor's degree. You know, in music. And positive rap. Or you could even take your political stance, you know. Ugh. I be sweating and stuff, but I'm still having a hard time getting this pot belly down. Maybe an hour is not enough. <laughs> Maybe I'm not doing
Boy, when I get that belly down, I swear. I think I'm gonna become a vegetarian. This belly go down. I'm having such a, a hard time getting this belly down. And I haven't eaten solid food for a whole week. It's gotten to the point where it's when artists put up put out music or if I go on World Star, I may click on everything except music. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Except I, I used to go to World Star and listen to every little up and coming rapper. <laughs> but now even the ones that have fame I, I don't click on everybody's stuff. I'd be very selective of who I want to listen to. So every time somebody drop, I don't listen to everybody. You know, I don't waste my time with it. You know, your time is valuable. You know what I'm saying? You know? become discouraging. You don't even want to click on the shit no more. People um, is getting flat stomachs in like two and three weeks. <laughs> I see some YouTubers is like get a flat stomach in a week, and I'm like, how? <laughs> I'm at what day? What? 63? <sighs> That's like over two months now. My belly is stubborn. <gasps> Mine's is real, real stubborn. <sighs> mm. Ooh, but when we get this stomach flat, boy, like I said, I'll probably be a vegetarian. I probably don't eat no meat. I'm gonna be a happy camper when this tummy go down. It's the thighs too, but you know, I could jog those off. Maybe I do need to go to the gym and get on a treadmill. <clears throat> Cause you know, it sweats you off. It sweats you off pretty good. You know, I guess jail is okay. I guess it's a livable, 
It's a doable place. <laughs> And niggas be talking about the projects, but I guess jail is, uh, what, better than the projects? You're willing to live in jail, but you're not willing to live in the projects? So the jail is better than the projects? Uh, or is it the cotton three square mills and you don't have to worry about paying your own bills or doing your own groceries? They give you three square meals. Some niggas is in jail for a place to live. <laughs> and a hot plate. Shit. Uh, you yeah, see me busting the sweat. You yeah, see that sweat sliding off my face. The stomach just don't want to go down. Am I not working hard enough? Or should I jog? Or go to the gym and get on the treadmill? You know, you don't want to go too many places with the coronavirus. You don't want to interact with too many people. And I didn't get my um, vaccine yet. Whew. Yeah. I'm working hard every day, busting the sweat, but when I get on the scale, it's still not, it's still, I'm still not under 200 pounds. I started at 220, and it'll give me 208 or 207, but I should be under, I should, I should have lost 20 pounds already, you know? against obesity. Uh, it's a tough fight. <laughs> tough. You gotta work hard. And watch your diet. up afterwards, uh, lay back and relax and study for my mortgage examination. My mortgage test is uh, March 15th. Tell me you don't see me busting and sweat.
Who's gonna come up? What artist gonna come up and change the direction of our music? You know, we need some happy music or some dance music. Even a political rap couldn't you know, incite a riot because Public Enemy used to, they used to have their little military on the stage. And they was being watched closely, like, they don't want something like that to grow too big. <clears throat> You know, but you can make a song, a political song that voices your views without inciting, you know, a riot. <clears throat> I think the baby did, um, not the baby, but little baby. Yeah. I listened to one of his songs, it was real good. It's not that they don't know how to do it, they just doing what's, you know, what's popular. You know, if these street niggas wanna hear Scarface kind of music. <sighs> well, we down to the last couple of minutes. Um, yeah, like, subscribe, leave me a comment. Hit the join button. Let me know if you want to uh, be in this positive rap contest. I guess I'll never get nobody on that, on that note. But I'm going to keep putting it out there. Positive rap or political rappers I'm looking for to contest. Give a couple of hundred dollars to to the winner and maybe we could keep that going every couple of weeks I'm gonna get my behind in a nice hot tub and relax oh we have plenty of snow this year it rained or snowed or sleeted today uh. So y'all think about it. Hit the join button. Join if you want to get be a part of the uh, rap contest. Only members only, okay? Oh, so peace. Y'all have a good day. Uh, think positive. Try to accomplish something. Uh, some of your goals. And, you know, take care of your health and watch your diet because working out ain't going, um, if you don't, it's not going to pay off if you don't watch your diet, okay? So, peace. I'm out. See you tomorrow.